Isaac is going to teach us today. Um, what are you talking about today, David? Uh, yeah, I'm talking David about uh, how God keeps his promises. There we go. All right, so I'm going to pray for that, and uh, we'll hear what Isaac has to bring today. Father, I got to thank you for today. Uh, thank you for Christmas and uh, your son, Jesus, and what uh, this time of the year means for uh, Christians and our church and just the world, God. I, got, I ask that uh, as Isaac speaks today, that these kids hear it, uh, that they listen, and that they can use it in their lives. Uh, so thank you for Isaac and his willingness to bring that message, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. My name is Isaac, Isaac Faith. I'm Mr. Brian's son right there. And uh, some of you all might know my sister, Isabel. She used to be in here, but now she's too old to be tall. She's taller than me. Um, I am older. I'm three years older. But that's how it is. Um, did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What? Who went out of town? Who went out of the state? Okay, what state did you go? Florida. Florida. Where did you go? North Carolina. North Carolina. Tennessee. Tennessee. Tara, where did you go? Tennessee. I was going to see who's the farthest, but I can't do that math in my head. So, um, it should be Tennessee. Tennessee. Well, North Carolina is pretty far, and Florida is pretty far. Oh, So um, today I'm going to be talking about how God keeps his promises, and uh, like Tyler said, it's almost Christmas. It's 24 days until Christmas. And uh, speaking of Christmas, I like, at Christmas I like to do one of my favorite things, and that is I like to eat lots of food. And right here I have, I think I have some candy. Chocolate. What? What? Chocolate. Let me see. It's not chocolate. It's like some pastry. Or and... I think y'all can have some in your small group. So uh, I'm gonna. I know you want probably want to eat them right now, but I'll, I'll promise I'll keep my promise. That's two promises. Um. So how many of y'all hate to wait? How many of y'all like to just get it done? And yeah, that's, I'm the same way. I I do not like waiting. I like I I don't like to wait in line for like lunch lines and. I'm sitting there in third block, and it's 30 minutes to lunch, and I'm sitting there, and we aren't doing anything, and I'm just hungry. I'm waiting to eat. Or maybe you're waiting for a new movie like Avengers, when Avengers Endgame came out. I was, I was having to wait a long time for that. And, um, or like you're waiting this month, and you've got like three weeks until you get out of school for Christmas break. And uh, are, is anybody going out of town for Christmas break? Yeah. Yeah. I know for me, we have one more week and then we have finals at Bring Your Mind. So, so as soon as we finish our finals, we're out there. Um, but it's one thing to have to wait, but have you, have, have you ever had to wait without not knowing how long you're going to wait? Like, there's a difference between like waiting, you know, I have to wait for a month for this to come out, and then waiting when I have no clue when this is going to happen. And so it's, it's frustrating, isn't it? It's frustrating me. And it can even make us like upset and mad, and sometimes even scared. Um, but like, one thing I want to ask is how should you respond to that? How should you respond to it? Does anybody have any ideas? What? You can eat while you wait. You can eat while you wait. Uh, yeah. You can also pray while you wait. You can talk to God. And so let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Uh, so back on the wall, we have some pictures that I'll be referencing to. Uh, so there's our Bible. Let's do a quick recap of some of the things we've talked about over the last few weeks. Uh, God created Adam and Eve in the garden. And... Uh, God gave them one rule. Does anybody know what rule that was? What were they not supposed to do? Just that. That's right. They were not supposed to eat from the tree of good and evil. Um, and sadly, they did not follow that. They decided to eat from the tree anyway. And because of their decision, they, the whole world would be faced with sin. And so the world was no longer perfect. And we sin too. And because of God's grace, he restores us and brings us back to him. And then we have Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. And he would have as many descendants as the stars in the sky. And, and God followed that promise. He gave Abraham a son uh, named Isaac, like me. And 
Isaac married Rebecca, and they had kids, and then their kids had kids, and soon enough they had a big family, and this family was known as the Israelites, and God's chosen people. God chose the Israelites to be his people, but then they became slaves in Egypt, and they were they cried out to God for him to rescue them. And then Moses came along, the Israelites land and live in it. But God allowed his people, even though his people didn't keep his promises, God still kept his promises to them. There are a chosen group of people called the prophets. God promised to rescue his people through Savior. And like in the book of Isaiah, I think the verses will be on the screen. A child will be born to us, a son will be given. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor and Mighty God. He will rule over David's throne and over his kingdom. His rule will be based on what is right and fair. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. Another example is Micah 5, 2, where it says, Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but one of you will come for me, a ruler over Israel. His family line goes back to early years of your nation. Zechariah 9, 9 talks about how the Savior will be the king. He says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. See, your king comes to you in righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. Isaiah 53, 8 tells of how the Savior will die for our sins. He was arrested and sentenced to death. He was caught off from his, this line. He was punished for the sins of my people. And then David writes in Psalms about how the Savior won't be dead, but he'll, he'll rise again. Psalm yeah, 16. It says that you will not leave in the place of dead. You always show the path of life. You will fill me with joy when I am with you. So God makes all sorts of these promises to his people. But if I told you that the Israelites had to wait hundreds of years, would you believe me? Yeah. yeah, they did. They had to wait hundreds of years before the Messiah came. And so it was in the Old Testament, there's a big gap between the Old Testament where it's just years and years of people waiting. And what if, how would you feel if you were promised something but you were never able to actually see it? How would you feel? Would you be sad? Yeah. That's, I don't know how these people felt, but these people were probably looking forward to being the Messiah in their own life. But most, all of them pretty much died before they could see it. And so, even though it took a long time, God kept his promises. And so, he still keeps his promises today. Uh, what does this mean to us right now? Um, it means that God will always keep his promises. And there's some times where, like, I'll make a promise to, like, one of my friends, and I might forget about it sometimes. And so, in their eyes, I might break that promise, and it might make them angry. But to me, I forgot I even made that. But God will never forget what he promised me. And he's always going to keep that promise. If God kept his promise about sending Jesus, won't he keep his promise about every other promise he made to you? Because, like, if he promises to send the Savior of the world, which is a pretty big promise, then won't he promise you to, or won't he keep his promise to you whatever you're asking? And he promises he'll do it for you. Uh, he promises to fight for us. He promises to give us strength when we need it. And he promises to give us courage if he asks for it. Uh, the same God who saved the Savior, or promised a Savior, is the same God who's beside you today. And now that I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're always going to be happy, which is where the joy comes in. Finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. So like when you're waiting and being patient, you can find joy in that scenario. Um, maybe an example of having to wait is, uh, maybe there's a new video game coming out and you're really waiting for this video game. But, and it, say it comes out, but you don't have enough money yet. So you're trying to save up as much money as you can to buy this video game. While you're saving up for this video game, you can still think about how, like, you can find joy in that scenario, in that situation. Um, one thing you need to remember is people can break promises. They won't always keep your promises. But I've said it a million times. God will always keep his promises. And remember that God's promise to Abraham was a father of a great nation. He promised to Moses that he'd give people the promised land. And God promised to send a Savior to a quiet little town called Bethlehem. And 
so we should keep our promises like God because uh, every day we should strive to look more and more like him. And so if we're keeping our promises, then people will come to rely on us and they'll say, hey, I remember when, say, Carson was there and he didn't break his promise. And so maybe they'll keep coming to you and asking you and then they'll wonder, huh, I wonder why he never breaks his promises. And that could be an example to share the gospel with somebody. And uh, I referred to this candy earlier and how I promised I was going to give it to you. So when you go to your small groups, I'll hand it out. But can, let's look at the key question here. What's the difference between joy and happiness? Think about that as you go to your small groups. So, like, happiness can be a long time, right? You can be happy for a while. And then joy can be something that you... You can have joy when you're not happy, right? So whenever you have joy, it helps with dealing with just situations. Um, and happiness is just, like, it's kind of hard because there's a, there's a difference. But um, So I'm going to pray, and then y'all are going to head to your small group. Or we're going to sing, and then we're going to head to your small group. All right, let's pray. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for all the kids that have come here today. Uh, I pray that you'll have we'll have good talks in our small groups and just good conversations. And I pray that you'll clear up any confusion that uh, we still have questions about. Um, I pray that as we worship right now, we'll take it seriously and that we'll, everything we do will honor you.